Welcome back. In this video, we will focus on the two major types of private equity strategies. These are the Leveraged Buyout, or LBO, and Venture Capital, or VC. LBOs are the most common strategy in private equity. They use a lot of debt financing to acquire companies. The leverage may come from bank loans, high-yield bonds, or mezzanine financing. Essentially, mezzanine is debt or preferred equity securities that are subordinate to high-yield bonds. It typically has warrants or conversion rights that give investors an additional upside. LBOs can be divided into two subgroups. In management buyouts, or MBOs, the existing management team acquires a company with the help of a financial sponsor, usually a private equity firm. Thus, they gain even more control over the strategic direction of the business. For instance, management can implement major corporate actions in order to create value, which might be difficult if they don't have full control over the company or the support of the majority of the shareholders. In management buy-ins, or MBIs, a private equity firm buys a target company and brings in a new management team to replace the existing one. This is done when an external management team is expected to implement new strategies that will increase the value of the business. As the target company's cash flows are used to repay buyout debt, companies with high, stable, and visible cash flow generation are considered suitable for LBOs. To create more value, private equity firms put in place management incentives like partial ownership in the business. They can also implement strategy initiatives for cost reduction and revenue enhancement. And what about venture capital? It provides funds to young companies with high growth potential, also known as startups or scale-ups. VC allows investments in equity, convertible shares, or convertible debt. As you can guess, the investment risk associated with venture capital is very high, as most startups fail before reaching maturity. The ones that succeed, however, usually deliver very big returns. VC funds are closely involved in the development of their portfolio companies. Usually, fund managers take board seats in these firms. Depending on the growth phase of companies invested in, venture capital investing can be divided into angel investing, seed stage, early stage, later stage, and mezzanine stage. Angel investing refers to the very first funding rounds of a business, when it may be only at the idea phase. Usually, financial from angel investors, also known as business angels, is used for preparing business plans and market potential assessment. Investors are mostly high net worth individuals rather than funds. Seed stage investments are typically used for market research, product development, and marketing. Not only business angels, but also VC funds invest in seed funding rounds. Then we have early stage investments, which finance initial commercial production and sales. While later stage VC funds invest in companies that already have production and sales and are trying to expand through increasing marketing activities. Finally, we have the mezzanine stage financing. This refers to the timing of the financing rather than its type, as it is used when a company is preparing for an IPO. It's called mezzanine because it enters the firm's capital structure during its transition from being a private organization to becoming a public company. Well done! This is how leveraged buyout and venture capital work in a nutshell. However, there are also two smaller categories of private equity strategies. The first one is development capital, which is also known as minority equity investing. It provides capital for business growth or restructuring. When it's done in public companies, it's called pipes or private investing in public equities. Finally, we have distressed investing. This involves investing in the debt of mature companies in financial difficulties, such as default or bankruptcy. These investors are sometimes called vulture funds. They work closely with the management of their portfolio companies to come up with a turnaround strategy and reorganization. Okay, great! We've covered the main types of private equity strategies. What else do we need to know? That's right! We have to discuss the common structure and fees of private equity funds. Similarly to hedge funds, private equity funds are usually set up as limited partnerships. The capital provided by investors is called committed capital. In general, it isn't all drawn down or invested immediately, 
but gradually as various investment opportunities are identified. The drawdown period is discretionary. However, it typically lasts from three to five years. And how about fees? As we mentioned earlier, alternative investment funds usually have management and incentive fees. Management fees of private equity funds are between 1 and 3% of committed capital, as opposed to invested capital. Incentive fees are typically 20% of profits. So, on average, we have the famous 2 and 20 fee structure, meaning 2% management fee and 20% incentive fee. However, before paying any incentive fees, the fund must return the investor's initial capital. In some cases, at the end of the fund life, the total incentive fee may turn out to be higher than 20%. This situation may occur when returns on portfolio companies are higher in the early stages of the fund life and decrease later on. The solution for this pitfall is called a clawback provision. It requires the fund manager to return to investors any surplus received in incentive fees above the agreed fee level. Okay, good. Another key point we need to cover are exit strategies. Private equity funds hold their portfolio companies for five years on average. Then they sell them to realize returns. The main exit strategies are a trade sell, a secondary sell, an IPO, recapitalization, or liquidation. Let's quickly discuss each of them. A trade sell is when a portfolio company is sold to a strategic buyer in a private deal. A secondary sell is a variant of this strategy where a portfolio company is sold in a private deal to another private equity fund or a financial investor consortium. Initial Public Offering, or IPO for short, is another common type of exit strategy. As you know, this is the process of listing a company's shares on a stock exchange where they are sold to the public and traded. An IPO makes the company public, which comes inevitably with many regulatory and disclosure requirements. Next, we have recapitalization. In this type of strategy, a given portfolio company takes on more debt to fund a dividend distribution to the private equity fund. In this way, the fund can cash out partially and still retain control of the portfolio company. Thus, it is not a real exit, but an alternative to realizing returns and often a step towards an exit. Finally, there is the option of a write-off or liquidation. In such cases, a private equity owner would close down a portfolio company and take a loss on that investment. Perfect! Now we know how private equity funds exit their investments. What's next? Let's discuss key benefits, risks, and due diligence. As with other types of alternative investments, over the last 20 years, private equity has recorded higher returns than the public stock market. It has also exhibited a lower correlation, suggesting diversification benefits. Private equity returns have a higher standard deviation than the public stock market that implies higher risk. As private equity strategies, such as LBO, use high leverage, investors should also consider the impact of interest rates and capital availability. Similarly to hedge funds, private equity is often affected by survivorship and backfill bias. When doing due diligence, selecting the right fund manager or general partner is of key importance. Investors should consider his or her track record, operating in financial experience and expertise. This is reflected in the performance of top quartile funds, which have significantly and consistently outperformed bottom quartile funds over time. Other factors to pay attention to during due diligence include the valuation methods used fee structures, and drawdown procedures. Okay, great! This is the end of today's video. If you are into educational investment and finance videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks so much for sticking till the end. I'll see you in our next episode.